Well, praise the Lord. Are you glad to be in God's house today? Can you say amen? It's great to see all of you here today. We're so glad that you've come to worship with us here. I'm going to invite you, if you're able to, go ahead and stand with us. We're going to worship the Lord together. Let's give them all the praise that we can. Hallelujah. so glad you're here today and uh, if you would like to worship the Lord with your giving here this morning we want to remind you that we uh, are blessed to have a, a box in the back that you can uh, go ahead and drop your offering in there and uh, and uh, we thank you so much for being willing to worship God that way are you here to praise God today amen, amen. that's why I, I need I need some time just to give God praise I don't know about you and so let's give him all the praise we can let's worship him and uh, let's praise him for the good things that he's done. Amen? Amen. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. 
You know, it's so good to be back with my family and singing and hearing your voices. Let's just lift up that. We just sang about how incredible our King is. He sets us free. Has he set us free? Truly? Then let's proclaim that with everything that we have in our lungs, everything we have in our being. Our God, the great I am, he's in control of it all. And he set us free from that darkness and those things that weigh us down. So let's proclaim that truth. There's no space that his love can reach. There's no place that we can find peace. There's no end to amazing grace. in the 
resurrection song. This is my hallelujah.
beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ is mine. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing stands name it is the name of Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah why don't you praise that name of Jesus will you do that Lord we worship you we give you honor and glory Lord Jesus we praise your name your name Lord God is a strong tower and the righteous can run to that name that is above all names and we can find safety. We can be safe today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of you need safety from time to time? Amen. You need God to give you refuge. You need God to give you strength. Well, the Lord's here to do that. And I want us to pray today that God will heal, that God will uh, provide for you, that the Lord would touch all that are watching us here today. We, we know... Here's what we know. We may not know what everyone's going through in this place, but here's, here's what we can rest on. We know who knows our needs even before we ask. We know who is in charge here. We know who's in control here, and that's Jesus. And it's at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. And so we give God all the praise that we can today. And this, this gives us this big picture of this awesome God that we serve. And so I want us to pray to this awesome God today. So whatever is on your heart, whatever he came in here carrying with you, it might be a problem in your family, it might be a situation in your body. Uh, it, it, you know, we've got walking miracles in this place. We do. We've got miracles in this place. People have been touched by the power of Jesus Christ in here. And it's so good to see, so good to see Pat in the second to last row. She, she got one of the expensive seats back there. <laughs> but uh, she, uh, she found out she's cancer free. Is that not cool? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty awesome. And and I, I was just talking to Tony, and I said, you know, Tony, I. It doesn't even look like you, you you had a heart attack just a few months ago and went through open hearts. And here you are. You're in the house of the Lord. You're in the house of the Lord. You know? So I know what I'm talking about here because standing around us are walking miracles of God's power and his grace today. So please do not underestimate what God can do in your situation. Don't, don't think for a moment that God's taken a summer vacation on your situation. <laughs> he hasn't. He's in control, and we're going to pray. So those of you who are watching us online, if you could type it, if you have a prayer request, you got some of your face in, type that in, and we're going to pray for you now, but we're also going to pray for you during the week as well, and uh, we're going we're gonna to ask God to do something great. It if you have a need, we don't have time to call them all out, but if you've got a need, could you just express that with an upraised hand here today? If, if you've got a need, there's a lot of people nearby. All right. If you feel comfortable, if you could lay a hand, I, and I know this is not social distancing, so, so, but I still believe that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I still believe that. And so, so maybe there's a couple of you together. You just want to uh, join hands or, or just, you know, do this number, whatever the case. And, and, and if you're not comfortable, if you're not comfortable with that, just, just at a distance, just kind of express, stretch your hand towards them. But we're going to pray that God would touch every need represented by every person who raised their hand all across this room. And we're going to believe that God will do miracles. He can do it. He can do it. Can you say amen? Look, the enemy's agenda is to steal and kill and destroy, and he has tried to do that in a huge way in these last few months. 
but I'm confident that the Holy Ghost is here to undo the work of the enemy in your life. And so we're going to ask God to do just that. Would you pray with me? Lord, we are coming to you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. We are asking you that you would demonstrate your power. We have pointed out people in this room whom you have touched. And God, that's not all. There are so many. But God, we're, we're believing that you will do great things as we sang earlier. We're asking you that you would heal and provide, that you would restore, that you would give hope to people who don't have hope. God, that you would do what only you can do. In fact, God, I'm asking for the kind of answers. I'm asking for the kind of miracles that would cause us to say, Lord, that was only you. It could only have been you. So, Lord, I pray for those kinds of miracles. I pray for those kind of, uh, of, of things to take place in the lives and the hearts of the people that are in this room, that are watching us online right now. We're asking you, God, that you would touch. God, some of us, we're standing in the gap for somebody. We're, we're saying, Lord, it's not me I'm asking prayer for. It's for someone I care about. Lord, would you touch that person as well, Lord, and honor, honor that faithfulness in reaching out to you on behalf of our loved ones, our friends, our coworkers, our neighbors. Jesus, we pray that you would use the prayers of the saints. Use the prayers of the saints. And God, I pray that you would undo what the enemy has tried to do in so many lives, Lord God. We stand against that in the name of Jesus. Lord, your word says when the enemy comes in like a flood, you will raise up a standard against that. So we pray for that right now. Stop the work of the enemy. And God, we just rest in your work and what you do. God, we love you. I thank you. I thank you that we can come to you confidently with our requests and find grace in our time of need. Have your way now, I pray, Jesus. In your name. In your name. And the Lord's people said a mighty amen in this place. Amen and amen. Would you give God praise all across this place? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, if you've not been seated already, you may be, and uh, it's so good to have you here today. Here we are at the, the final Sunday in July. It's hard to believe that uh, we are <laughs> this far in the year, and uh, uh, it's, it's great to see each and every one of you, and some of you, you've been on vacation, and you've come back. Thank you for coming back. We, we like that when you do that, so... Uh, let me share just a couple of quick announcements for you here today, and uh, I've got an email address that I want to show you on the uh, on the big screen. It's for our uh, we, we we have a prayer team that will pray for your needs anytime you have one. And some of you, I, I want to give you a chance to either write this down or take a screenshot of it. Maybe you want to take a picture of it with your phone. You know, what, whatever the case might be, but. Uh, if you can get a shot of this, it, if you have a need and you want people to pray for you, uh, send an email to this address. If you have email, do not send a letter to this address. It will not be delivered. But if you send an email, it's bcotprayer at googlegroups.com. We've actually had this for several years. And uh, this will immediately go into the inbox of quite a few people uh, who will legitimately pray for you. That way, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, contacting me for your prayer request to get through. You, you, can, you can bypass me. You know, chances are I'm in the woods looking for my golf ball. And, uh, uh, oh, man. And uh, so, it, so sometimes you don't get reception when you're there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's, uh, that's perfect. So if, if you can do that, that's, that's a resource for you, and uh, that'll get people praying for you. And how many of you know you can't have too many people praying for you? Amen? Amen. Amen. And I also want to point out one more thing. Every weekday at 9 o'clock uh, on our two Facebook pages, we have a, a Facebook group and we have a Facebook page, and if you don't know the difference, that's okay. Just uh, you can find us on one of those. We have five minutes 
with Phil. And what we do is we give you, how many of you have listened to a five minutes with Phil before? Life-changing, isn't it? And uh, feed my ego. Thank you very much for that. And, uh, but uh, every weekday at 9 o'clock, we post a, a five-minute online devotional for you to kind of help get your day started. And then later in the day, if I remember, <laughs> I try to post it on my personal page as well. And uh, we, we got a, a good number of people watching these, and it's pretty exciting. So that's a service to you. That's just a resource for you to help you. So if you're online, you can, you can find us on, on Facebook and, and listen to that. It's also on our YouTube channel, Every Single Five Minutes with Phil. You could actually binge watch me now. And uh, how pathetic of a life would you have if you chose to do that? But uh, uh, yeah, we've got about a month's worth of five minutes with Phil now. So uh, it's on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, take advantage of that. Okay, great. So good to see you. If you dropped in a little bit later and, and you have uh, a desire to worship the Lord with your giving, uh, we invite you to uh, uh, drop it in the box right there by the sound booth and wave at our tech crew. They get lonely back there. And, uh, and you can do that even now while my son Jonathan sings. So Jonathan, why don't you uh, minister in song? And uh, before he plays, I want to I pray for you and for your, your financial needs. Uh, if you've got a need of some kind, uh, God is the provider. Can you say Amen. He is. He is. And uh, he is, uh, he's doing great things. He's doing wonderful things in so many lives. And, and I just want to pray that God will bless you and meet your needs financially. And then after I say amen, Jonathan's going to uh, sing a little bit. And then I'm going to take us back to Psalm chapter 42 if you want to get your scriptures ready. Okay? Jesus, I pray that you would uh, bless every gift that is given. Some are about to give online. Lord, some have mailed in their offering during the week. Uh, some, Lord, are, uh, are participating in giving right here in this building. God, whatever means that we choose to worship you this way, God, take our gifts, bless it. And I also pray that you would bless the giver. Uh, God, there may be some that are going through some difficult times right now, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult. And I pray, Lord, that you would provide, that you would touch job situations, God, that you would open up avenues of employment and income. And Lord, I pray that you would bless businesses. And uh, Lord, we'll thank you for all you do. Be blessed as we honor you and worship you. Bless Jonathan as he ministers in song in your name. Amen. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Free at last, he has ransomed me. Oh, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. 
you are for me and not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am, oh, oh. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that a lot. And uh, how many of you wish you had my son's hair? Wouldn't that just be amazing? Wow. Wow, the hair. <laughs> did you really just fluff it? I cannot believe you did that. All right. Well, grab your, <laughs> grab your Bibles, if you would. And we are in Psalm chapter 42. Psalm chapter 42. I better get my notes, otherwise you'll be stuck here for about a week. Uh, Psalm 42. And uh, we started this series last week. And... I, um, I, I was led to this passage, I was led to this, uh, this whole chapter in the Bible, and for some of us it's, it's a familiar one, others of us it's relatively new, and uh, it, uh, it kind of takes us to a low point in David's life, uh, and, and I was asking the Lord, God, what do you, what do you want the church to hear? Uh, in this crazy time that we're living in right now. And are we not living in a crazy time right now, right? How many of you, you're almost afraid to turn on the news because it's just like, oh no, no, uh, what's going to happen now? And like, we're at the point where, <laughs> we're at the point where nothing would surprise us. Like if a giant squid landed in like Arkansas, it'd be like, well, okay, it's 2020. Uh, you, you know, it, it's been kind of that kind of year. It's just been, it's been nuts. And I thought, okay, Lord, what, uh, what do you want us to hear? And so I've divided uh, Psalm 42 into three different sections. Now, we started last week by looking at verses 1 and 2. And we talked about having a spiritual thirst for the things of God, to be thirsty to be craving the things of God. Today, I want to go to verse 4. And the title of this message is this, uh, No More Tears. No More Tears. Again and again, when I talk to people about where they're at and how they're doing in, in all of this, uh, there's, and, and I'm not here to depress you, by the way, so, so hang with me, okay? Because I'm, I'm actually going to show you how we can kind of get out of this rut. Uh, but I, I know that this whole corona thing has been very much a, uh, a physical battle, right? With the disease and everything. And, and you know, we're not going to get into a debate or, or anything. So save your emails because uh, I'm so tired of it. Um, <laughs> But we're also going to look at how I think this whole thing is affecting us in other ways. Like, I'm convinced that th there is a huge emotional impact that's taken place in so many people's lives. And I'm not even referring to people who might be on the streets demonstrating or protesting or, or whatever the case like that. And, and I'm just talking about the everyday person like most of us in here, if not all of us in here. I, I'm convinced, because people, I mean, I have this conversation, I think, 
almost every other day. It's like, why is that so crazy right now, Pastor? Why is it so crazy? And, and I think when you got people that are kind of cooped up and they don't go out and then uh, there's a lot of distrust right now in a lot of people, right? Right? And maybe in leadership, whatever. I, it just, it is a perfect storm for a lot of heightened emotions. And one of those heightened emotions, I think, would be that of, of just misery, of sadness. And if that is you, you're in good company. Because a man, the Bible says, that there is a guy by the name of King David, that whether, whether you're a Christ follower or not, you've heard of David. And the Bible identifies him as a man who is after God's own heart. And this guy really had his low points. Psalm 42 was one of those low points. And I want to share the first four verses with you because I want to, I want to equip you to be able to get out of your low point. Here's what I know. It's not God's intent for you to remain at your low point emotionally. Good place to say amen. Well, that's just my identity, I guess. I'm just going to be sad all day. That's, that's not God's plan for you. No. That is not God's best for you. Not whatsoever is that God's best for you. Uh, I'm reminded that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It, it, that's, it's, not, it's not God's will for us to be in a constant state of misery and depression and, and sadness and dismay. And, and I just fear that, that that has kind of overtaken the church, not just Bethel Church, but the church, capital C, people who call themselves Christ followers. This is, a, this is an issue, and, and I want to I wanna tell you that David was right there, but throughout the course of this psalm, God kind of brings him out. And I want to show you from the first four verses what God can do for you. Actually, what you can allow God to do for you. Because here's what I know. God will not force himself on you. So if you want freedom, if you want to be rescued from this thing, uh, you got to let him do it. you got to do your part as well. you got to do your part, right? Right? Look, look. I want six-pack abs. I really do. Okay? That means i got to do a sit-up once in a while. Okay? I can't just... Uh, yeah, I know some of you are like, really? Yes. Okay, so it takes work on my part to get that desired result. Same thing with all this other stuff. There's work that we have to do on our part as well. I want to show you what David was reminded of today. Stand with me if you're able to in honor of God's word. And we're going to post the scriptures on the screen for you if you don't have a Bible with you. Psalm 42, beginning in verse 1 and going to verse 4. It says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Those are the verses we covered last week. Now verses 3 and 4. Listen to this gut-level honesty. My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. I'm going to stop there because I think God has a message for us here. Will you pray with me? Lord, we just want your best. So God, I pray that... Uh, you would show us what we need to do in order to see that take place. So speak to us, Lord, I pray. And God, I'll thank you and give you praise in your name. And we all said, amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Low points. See, it's really bad theology to say, oh, if you're a Christian, you should never be sad. Okay, that's not even true. 
Even Jesus wept, right? Yeah. Right? Okay, so we're going to have low points. We're, 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 we're going to have times where we're going to have some heightened emotion. What we need is balance. We need, we need Jesus to help level us out. We need, listen, we need Jesus to help us and to level us out. Okay. Let me just pause here and, and say that if you're at a low point in your life, if you're looking to anything but Jesus work in your life to get you out of that, you're settling for a cheap imitation. Or you're just settling for a temporary fix. So you're not going to find the kind of restoration that Jesus can give you by going to a bottle of wine or going to a, a, a case of beer. You're not going to find it by jumping into another relationship and dumping the old one or the current one that you have. All these, these are just cheap imitations for what Jesus really has for you. You with me? You with me? Did I make anybody mad? I hope so. That would have been awesome. So here we go. I want to, <laughs> not really, I'm not here to make you mad, right? I'm here to push you a little bit closer to the Father is what I want to do. Okay. But sometimes, how many, how many of you know God's got to take care of our stuff? Sometimes. And he's got to meddle around in our stuff that we think is so important that really isn't. So, so let's let him do that, okay? So I want to look at three elements of this passage today. And I'm going to camp on in verses 3 and 4. Let's look at three elements of this passage. And let's see what we might learn about ourselves as we look at David. And let's see what the Lord might have to say to each and every one of us. Let, let's, let's start off. Number one, I want to take a look at David's misery. What made him so miserable? Man. Uh, in, in fact, let me just pause and say before we even get to what made him so miserable, let's just look at the extent of it. Okay, he goes there in verse 3. Have you ever prayed a prayer like this? Dear Jesus, verse 3, my tears have been my food day and night. That's intense. Okay, we're not talking about just being sad for a little bit. My tear, instead of eating, I'm crying. I'm weeping. I'm miserable. I'm in grief. I'm going through a lot. This is intense. But here's the deal. Here's the deal, okay? <laughs> We've got this little thing called a pandemic going on in our world. And this, the, the, the potential for this kind of hurt right now is real. The potential for this, kind, for this right here, this kind of misery, this kind of grief, it is enormous in the time that we're living in right now. It's enormous. Listen to just a few stats that I have for you. Ready? And I got these off the internet, so they got to be true, right? <laughs> right? Here we go. Um, nearly half of all Americans report that the coronavirus is harming their mental health. This is according to the Kaiser Family Foundation. A federal emergency hotline for people who are in emotional distress. They have reported a 1,000% increase in calls compared to this time last year. So it's not a 100% increase, which would be intense enough. A thousand percent. So whatever that number was last year, multiply that by 10. And that's what's going on right now. There's an online therapy company called Talkspace. I've never heard of it. I can't vouch for it. Um, but it, here, here's what they've reported. Since the middle of February, they have had a 65% jump in the amount of their clients. 
65% leap all of a sudden. Uh, people's mental and emotional well-being, it, it's being messed with right now. And I could tell you that this is not just a COVID-19 issue. This is very much a spiritual issue as well. Uh, the, the enemy of our souls, and again, I say this a lot just to clarify, I'll say it again, I am not a demon under every rock kind of guy. It's like, ooh, no, a demon of ferns. No, you know, I, I, I'm not that way. But I also know that the enemy of our soul is very active and will use whatever means necessary to attack the church and the followers of Jesus Christ. And oftentimes he will try to hit us, not necessarily in our pocketbook, not necessarily with our job, but really the foundation of it all, he will try to mess with our emotions. And more than ever, we have people right now who, I mean, just go to social media, if you dare. There are people that don't know how to handle or process or navigate their emotions right now. Not at all. This worries me, church. This worries me. We, we can't get swept up in this. We got to know that there's an answer here. We, we, we got to know that there's a way that we can go here. Look, we are, I'm just going to go. If, if, we're, if we're Christians, folks, then there's something different about us. We have... If I, could, if I dare call the Holy Spirit a resource, we have a resource that's available to us to help us in our times of misery, in our times of, of difficulty, in our times of emotional distress. And that's Jesus. Now, yes, I know that there's help out there. I thank God for godly counselors. Uh, and, and, and by the way, if wow, if you need direction that way, I can point you to some places that, that are or people that are far more qualified than me to help you with some serious things like anxiety and, and depression or, or whatever it is might be. I believe that God puts godly people in those places for a reason, and he definitely helps people that way. So, so, so I'm not down in counseling whatsoever, but listen to me, listen to me. We don't have to deal with this the same way that the world does. We have Jesus. We have Jesus. And we see David's misery. And look, if you feel miserable today, it does not necessarily mean that you're a bad Christian. Sometimes difficult things and bad things happen to really good people. And sometimes we have to fight that battle against all these emotions that bring us down. How do we do that? I'm going to get to that. But before I do, not only do I want to take a look at David's misery, but I also want to take a look at David's mockery. People were mocking him. <sighs> Some of you might know where I'm going with this. But look at verse 3 again. My tears have been my food day and night. Look what I underlined. While people, huh, people, while people say to me all day long, where's your God? So it was one thing for David to be miserable. Add to that the fact that there were individuals that were adding to that misery. Some of you haven't caught this yet. Sometimes the situation is one thing. Sometimes the people around you during the situation is another. Well, you know, if you just pray a little bit more, you'd probably be okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know she sprained her ankle. You know, if you'd pray a little bit more. You know, if you were just closer to Jesus, you wouldn't be feeling this way. I mean, have you heard this, these great basement theologians that say this? You know, I, 
they'd probably make a YouTube video somewhere in their mom's basement or whatever. And, and, and by the way, by the way, again, uh, anybody can make a YouTube video. If you don't believe me, get on YouTube and you'll see. Uh, that doesn't make it accurate or right. In fact, a lot of times it's kind of stupid. But we, we, need to, we need to be careful what we take in and, and believe in. And, and look, a great amount of David's hurt was coming from other people. I want to talk to those of us who maybe have been hurt, not by the situation that we're in, but we're hurt by other people. They said the wrong thing. They're not being supportive like you thought that they would be. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Uh, and, and in fact, <laughs> this is an enormous issue right now in our country because we don't even have to necessarily engage with somebody to tell them what's on our mind. That's called Twitter. We can say whatever we want. We can even say it to who we want to say it to. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, I sent a tweet to Bernie Sanders, and I sent a tweet to Kanye West. I won't tell you what I said. It was funny. I did tell Bernie to take a nap because he looked tired. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, maybe I did say that. I don't remember. Um, but... but you can actually send a tweet to a celebrity, to a politician, to our president. I heard he's on Twitter. Uh, you can... <laughs> Is he? Is he? Okay, that's good to know. Um, and what happens, we can engage people, we can say whatever we want to say and remain detached. And sometimes we will say some of the worst things. I've, I've, <laughs> I've had things said to me online that I promise you those people would never say to me to my face. Never. Never. You're a terrible pastor. Nobody here, by the way. People who don't even know me, okay? You're not even saved. Oh, you're going to go to hell. God is disappointed in you. You are a disgrace. It's just like... <laughs> Thank you very much for that uplifting message from Facebook. I tell you, folks, it is, it's funny. It's, it's not funny, but it's funny. It's crazy. But what happens, if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we could really get caught up in what other people say. And do you know something? I had to get over that a long time ago. I did. I did. Because people's opinions of you and me will change like that. I'm telling you the truth. And, and, and so David, David's misery was added to because there were people around him who every day were saying all day long, where's your God, David? Where's your God, David? Maybe a lot of your misery is not necessarily because of a pandemic. Maybe, maybe your pandemic is the people that you deal with on a regular basis. And that's making you miserable. Don't point. Uh, but but maybe, maybe it's the people... <laughs> that's right. Maybe it's the people that you see on a regular basis. Maybe, maybe it's people that you have to deal with at work. Maybe it's people that you... Uh, and th then at the pandemic, which has brought the worst out of a lot of people. I mean, folks, if we have a differing opinion on something online... Well, then you're the enemy. You are, you are either the Antichrist or the false prophet, one of the two. I mean, because why? Because you disagree with me. And it's just like, whoa, where do we get, how do we get here? How do we get here? And what I don't want to see is this take place in the body of Christ. Because a lot of our passionate opinions can, can spill out and it could actually do more harm than good if we're not careful. Just because it's true doesn't mean you have to say it. Did you know that? Just because you can say it 
doesn't mean you should. I read somewhere in the scripture about how we should be slow to speak. Had that been written in 2020, we should be slow to post, slow to tweet, slow to snap. So David's just, David's miserable. And then compounding that is the fact that there are people, individuals that are adding to his misery. What do you do if you're at a low point like David? Now, some some Christians, their answer is this. Well, I guess I'll just remain this way. I am called to be miserable. That's God's call on me. I am called to be the most miserable Christian on the planet. Hallelujah. Praise my name. And guess what? That's not God's plan for you. God wants to bring you out of that. I said he wants to bring you out of that. So, so, how does this take place? David goes to verse 4, and he remembers some things. And my final point is the one I'm, it's the meat of this message, is David's memory. We've seen his misery and his mockery, but, but, but his memory, he is reminded of some very important things. And I, I want to remind you of some very important things. So I'm speaking to two groups of people here. One, I'm speaking to people who might be a bit miserable today. You're at a low point. I'm also speaking to people, that's not you, but you know somebody who is. This is for you as well. This is for you as well. Because I believe that it is not the pastor's job to try to bring everybody out of the pit of despair one at a time. Physically, I can't do that. Emotionally, I can't do that. But the body of Christ, oh, we can do that. The body of Christ can do it. And so, look at verse 4. He says this, These things I remember as I pour out my soul. So while he's praying about how miserable he is and how people have been impacting This is what God brings to his memory. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Believe it or not, we've got some directions here that we could take from verse four that I want you to take with you today and keep with you for a long, long time. See, here's what David was reminded of. He was reminded, number one, of when he would attend the house of God. He would attend the house of God. He said, these things I remember when I used to go to the house of God. Let's stop there. If there's one casualty of this pandemic, it's the fact that churches all across the world have been impacted in a difficult way at this time. Uh, here's what experts are telling us. You ready? One out of three people, I want you to hear this. One out of three people who were going to church before COVID-19 are now not going to church and they are not engaging online at all. One out of three. So take a church of 100 people That means 33 of those people, 33% of those people have cut themselves off totally from the body of Christ, from the house of God. Think of our brother and sister churches of a thousand. This is scary. Look at these stats here. I just picked these up today. 48% of churchgoers say that they have not watched any church online in the last four weeks. Only 40% watch their regular home church online. 23% said they streamed a different church. It is kind of a buffet right now. You know, find the one that you like. Oh, he's good looking. Let's watch him preach. And uh, these stats scare me. 
Why? Why? Because uh, I'm seeing people become disengaged from the house of God. And we live in this world now in 2020 where we have so many ways for you to get engaged in the body of Christ with the church right now. If you have a smartphone, uh, how many of you have a smartphone? Okay. How many of you have a really stupid phone? Can I see? Okay. How many of you, it's supposed to be a smartphone, but it's actually a stupid phone. It has nothing to do with you whatsoever. Sure. <laughs> but the fact, I mean, look, look, I'm watching me right now. Right? I mean, this is like, we've messed with the whole space-time continuum here. This is kind of weird. And I will tell you, the camera adds a few pounds, uh, unfortunately. So the, those sit-ups I was talking about, boy, oh, boy. Well, we got to remain engaged to the house of God. And currently right now, see, this church, we've never been afraid of technology. This pastor has never been afraid of technology. I embrace it. I am such a nerd when it comes to that. And I will find whatever way I can for us to try to engage people with the body of Christ. In fact, I'm, there's more I want to do. It's probably going to drive my board crazy, but there's more that I want to do. But if you know somebody who's cut off, listen to me. I mean, you're here, okay? Great. You folks are watching online. But if you know somebody who is cut off, would you go after them? I tell you, whew, there, there, there are days I get really emotional about this, okay? There's a segment of people they're not online. Uh, they don't even have a DVD player. We, uh, Hannah and I tried to make DVDs for some of our saints, and they don't even have that. They got a VHS player for their homecoming videos, right? Which is great. Those are, <laughs> those are awesome. Uh, but if you ever sit in the front chairs, yeah, you better pray. Anyway, uh, if you've ever watched a homecoming video, you know how hilarious that joke was. Uh, so, so my heart goes out to the people that are just totally cut off from any online interaction and totally cu cut off from this. Oh, Lord, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Maybe the body of Christ can go after those people. Maybe you know somebody who's cut off, somebody that you normally sit near or by. Maybe a phone call. Not just from the pastor, but, but, but from you. And just reconnecting them again. Maybe you can do that. That could actually bring somebody out of that low point. I got to hurry. Uh, attend the house of God. Number two, number two, acknowledge God's protection. Attend the house of God. Secondly, acknowledge God's protection. Look what he says. I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. Now, listen, I realize that there are precautions that we are expected to take right now in this pandemic world that we're living in. And whatever your opinions are of that, I'm not here to discuss that right now. I definitely will not argue at all. But let's remember this, that God is still the protector and the shield for all of us. And, and, and sometimes we can be so overwhelmed by what's going on in our world right now. We forget that there's still one that we could pray to who could be a shield and a shelter for us in the midst of all of this. And he can protect us and he can keep us safe. And if worse comes to worse, he can even heal our bodies. And David is reminded, you know what? I used, to, I used to go to the house of God regularly. And when I would do so, it was under the protection of the mighty one. Listen, I'm not saying we need to be stupid. I'm not saying that we need to be careless. But I am saying this. We do not need to be fearful. We don't need to be fearful anymore. We are still under the protection of the mighty one. Still. Will we be smart? Yes. If you see me at Giant Eagle, I'm going to wear a mask, okay? I'm going to do it. Don't send me emails. Don't criticize. Just 
I'm going to wear a mask. But here's the thing. If me putting that thing on, regardless of how I feel about it, if that makes somebody feel a little bit more secure, fine. Fine. I'll trust God to protect me. I'll trust... Uh, some of you are getting upset with me because I'm saying all this stuff. So, so listen, okay? Let's see this. Let's see this through God's eyes, okay? Is this a hill that we really need to die on? There's a world that needs Jesus out there right now. There is a world that needs Jesus. And we have a golden opportunity as the church of Jesus Christ to tell people that there is hope in Jesus. So if you're sharing your testimony with a mask on or no mask, if you're sharing your testimony out, outdoors or indoors within six feet of somebody or five feet of somebody, I saw somebody with a face shield on and it was bedazzled. It was the most unbelievable thing I'd ever seen in my life. But I thought, okay, if this makes you safe, that's fine. But here, listen to me. We don't have to live in fear. There are some people with some irrational fear going on. Perfect love casts out fear. Fear does not belong in your relationship with Jesus. That's not God's plan for you. I am going to church, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm not shutting down services ever again. I'm just telling you, it's not going to happen again. Okay? Okay? I just, I can't. I can't do this anymore. I can't do, I can't do that anymore. I'm not going to do it anymore. And, and, and since you can catch me online in the extra pounds, that's fine. I mean, go, go for it. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm to the point where it's just like, okay, God, this isn't about my, dem I'm just ranting, but here we go. This isn't about my democratic rights. Th this is all about, this is all about, Lord, I want to worship you. I need to worship you. And I cannot, like California is out outlawing what's going on right now. I just refuse. I, that's when I will have to say, I'm sorry, but I have to obey God rather than man on this one. And so that's my stand on that. But we need not be fearful of a virus. We need not be fearful of man. We're not going to be careless. We're not going to be silly. We're not going to be stupid, but we're also not going to be fearful. Can you say amen to this thing? Amen. Okay, so... I think I've offended every single person in here somehow, some way, maybe. So, and that's not my intent, okay? I just know what the enemy is trying to do, and I just refuse to let him do it. I'm going to say it again. I know what the enemy is trying to do, and I refuse to let him do it. We can't. We are under the protection of the Almighty. And, yeah, and I may get sick, okay? Then, then I am under the protection of the healer, Jesus Christ. And, 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 I'm, and, and you know what? If he takes me home, <laughs> fine with me. Fine with me. Fine with me. Fine with me. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, don't try to kill me, but... but. <laughs> Going to give you two more. I'm just all over the place. <laughs> Going to give you two more. Uh, what else did he remember? Adoration and praise, thirdly. He remembered to worship God. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise. Don't let the devil take your praise. Don't let the devil take your worship. Don't be so focused on the problem that you lose your focus on Jesus. The enemy will try to take your praise. I promise you, the enemy will try to take your praise. What does praise do? Praise is not buttering God up so that we get whatever we want. That's not what praise does. You know what praise does? Praise gives us a more accurate picture of who God really is. When I sing, how great is our God? When we sing, 
God, you're so good. Do you know what we're doing? We're acknowledging to him who he really is. We're not reminding him. He knows he's great. He knows he's good. But sometimes we don't remember that he's great. And we don't remember that he's good. And we don't remember that he's almighty. And we don't remember that he is greater than anything I could ever face. So when I praise him and when I worship him, my view of him is no longer distorted, but it is more accurate. And when it's more accurate, then I can see, you know what, that thing that's making me miserable, I can actually put that in the hands of this great and good and awesome and mighty God, because he's not in some box. I can actually give him whatever it is I'm facing today. Don't let the enemy take your praise. Well, I don't like that song. Oh, please. This ain't karaoke. Why? Would you try to tell them the underground church in China about your taste in music? Uh, we, we left that church because I didn't like their music. <laughs> they will laugh at you right now. I mean, they, they will look at you and say, you what? So we're risking our lives just to own a Bible. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Everything. Don't, don't let the devil take your praise. The scripture says to put on the garment of praise for the spirit heaviness. Maybe when I'm feeling down and miserable, maybe that's, and, and it, it is a sacrifice of praise. You know, it's one thing to come in here, hallelujah, when everything's great. But when you're down and your family's a wreck and your finances are a mess and you're sick and you're in pain, okay, that's a sacrifice. And, we, and, and when you could say, Lord, I don't even feel like this, but I will praise you. Yeah. That's the most genuine, awesome expression of praise you can ever muster. Yeah. That'll bring you out of that misery. Yeah. Well, I'm a little mad at God. Get over it. Yeah. You're mad at the wrong person. Don't get mad at him. Praise him. Don't get mad at him. Praise him. Replace that anger with praise. Watch what happens. Here's the last one. We need to associate with other believers. David said this. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one. With shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. So David was reminded that he wasn't worshiping alone. There was something very important about connection with other people. And this is the thing that the enemy has really gone after. Not just limiting our church services. Folks, come on. You, you can go online and find preachers way better than me. You can find, you, you can, you can find, you can find all kinds of services. Now, don't do that. <laughs> that really hurt my feelings. But church, church is not just three fast ones, two slow ones, announcements, prayer, offering, sermon, goodbye. That, that's not church. It's not just church. Church is all of us connecting and being there for each other. And, and some of us are like, well, the... COVID sure stopped me from doing that. I disagree. I think, and I honestly believe this, I really believe that the church has the same amount of creativity that they will allow the Holy Spirit to give them. Since Jesus created the entire universe, something tells me that he could plant some ideas in some people in this place, in this pastor, in you, and the people that are watching at home right now. God can plant some ideas in some people. 
where you could aggressively and deliberately go after people who have been cut off. You can. It's not hard. You, <laughs> some of you are really good at texting. You do it during church. And, and, and <laughs> like I don't see you. And the ones that are playing Candy Crush, I know what you're doing. I, I just, I know. M- maybe it's just a simple text message. I miss you. I'm thinking about you. Oh my goodness. Do you know the impact of that? <laughs> when Mary Lou Croft sends cards, oh my word. I don't even know who she sends them to. I just turn her loose. Because she is a card-writing machine. That, make, that makes a difference. That makes a difference, Mary Lou. Thank you. We got people in nursing homes. We got people that are, we got people that are legitimately stuck at home because of their physical con- concerns. We don't mock them for that. But we can't, we can't discard them got to go after them. And I'm going to say it again, the pastor can't do it all. I'll try my best. But not everybody's going to watch five minutes with Phil. And you better repent for that. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) I'm joking. But some of you can reach people that I can't reach. I'm not offended by that. Go for it. This is the body of Christ. We, we, are, we are looking out for one another. This whole church thing, it's a team sport. We're in this together. We're trying to get to heaven together and trying to take as many people with us as we possibly can. So you have a part of that. But to those of us who purposely want to isolate ourselves from the rest of the body, you listen to me. That is the first step to spiritual failure. You will not succeed as a Christian very long if you try to do it by yourself. I had one lady tell me, I don't need church. I got Joel Osteen and I got my Bible. Thank you. And Joel has great hair. Can I just say that? Great hair. Great smile. Big building. And he's doing something right, so I'm not here to make fun of him. <laughs> At least not right now. No, I'm kidding. No. But that lady was so wrong because you need. You need to connect. We we need this. I I love watching you all connect. I do. I love watching. I love the fact that we can laugh together. We can cry together. We have legitimate concern for one another. Those of you who are huggers, you hug. Maybe socially distant, but you hug now. Others of you were never huggers in the first place. And be honest with you, this pandemic is the greatest thing that ever happened to you. (laughs) You you know who you are. Uh, Preachers, you ever write a sermon and think, this is not going the way that I had planned. This is one of those Sundays for me. But we need each other. We need each other. We have people that cannot come here. They need us. They need us. I want to get those 33% back. I want to get them back. I, I, I want to go after those 48% that are neither attending a service nor even watching a service online. I, I, okay, we've got a mission here, folks. We've got a mission. And what better time than now? to let people know that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Politicians might be driving you crazy. The government will make decisions and change their minds and drive you crazy. I get it. 
But there is one whose love for us and his wisdom for us is beyond compare. And Jesus Christ is the source of our hope. Not a presidential candidate, not a health official, not a preacher. Jesus Christ. And if we could just let people know that I, as a follower of Jesus Christ, I care so much about you. We could pull some people out of the pit. Can you say amen? amen. Stand with me, will you? <laughs> Man. Oh. Ralph, can you help me, please? Thank you. Well, that was interesting. Um, here's what it comes down to. I wrote some notes this morning. It, it comes down to this. If you're in such misery, right? If you're at a low point right now, here's what I know we need. We need God. Right now, we need God. And we need each other. And can I say that each other, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to do something stupid. We're going to post something that we shouldn't have posted. Okay. Welcome to the body of Christ. Warts and all. Okay, so, so if we could just accept each other and our disagreements, it doesn't mean we have to be disu disunited. Did you know that? Well, he's a Democrat. I'm a Republican. One of us ain't saved. Well, uh, <laughs> let's hold back here, Karen. Maybe, maybe we can embrace our differences. And that's what makes us so special, is the fact that we're the body of Christ. We, we have all kinds of characters in this room. A lot of characters in this room. <laughs> Exhibit A right here. But we need each other. We need God and we need each other. There are people that are watching this right now. We need you to, know, to, to look on this phone and know that some of you pray for me. To know that you support us, that you're there for us, that Some of these folks I've never met. Some I've only seen once or twice in my life. We need each other. Somebody asked me, how big's your church? I said, I have no idea right now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm a mega church or, or a startup. I don't know. And I'm really not worried about that. What I'm concerned about is that we do not detach from each other and that we do not detach from God. If you're at a low point, God is here to be the glory and the lifter of your head. Verse 5, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. Verse 5 says, Why are you so downcast, all my soul? Put your hope in God, which will be the text next week. Let's put our hope in God. Let's put our hope in God. And let's see what the Lord does. I want to pray for those of you here today who might be feeling low. I'm praying that God would just bring you out, that you'd be reminded of just the precious gifts that you have, like David was reminded of that. And to those of us who are doing just fine today, I'm going to pray that God puts in your heart one person that you could reach out to this week. I'm not asking you to reach out to 25 people. <laughs> Some of us are making our list already. I'm just, I'm just asking God to put one person on your heart. Think of the difference this group could make. Those that are watching online, those that are here in these seats, think of the difference we can make if we just reach out to one. So Jesus, I pray for two groups of people here today. 
God, I pray for the person who is feeling so low, so miserable. Lord, that's not your plan. And maybe the enemy of our souls has just whispered lies to, to, to us. Told us we're nothing. Told us that God doesn't care. Told us that people don't care. God, that's just a lie. You know that. I pray that they would know that. So God, we just exhale all the lies, but we're going to inhale the truth that says that you are a friend that sticks closer to us than a brother, that, that, that we are the body, and if one part hurts, we all hurt. If one part rejoices, we all rejoice. So, so God, I, I, I pray that you just lift us out. It may be a step-by-step, day-by-day thing, but God, lift us out of this misery. And Lord, to, to those that are listening right now, God, would you put one person on our hearts that we could reach out to, a person we could call, a person that we could text, a person we could hit up on Facebook, a person we could send a card to, a person we could make a call to. Lord, whatever means you want us to do that, but God, would you put one person in our, in our hearts that maybe is a little cut off from this church family, from the body of Christ, from anybody? God, God, would you put that person in our hearts right now? And God, I pray that that would not leave us this week. I pray that that would just, it would just be at the forefront of our thoughts, God. In fact, God, I pray it wouldn't even stop with one text. But God, may we follow up with that person. May we show them that it's not just because the preacher preached some sermon, but God, we genuinely care about this person. So God, give us the compassion of Jesus Christ for that individual, I pray. May we see them like you do. Go with your church, I pray, God. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm so glad you were here today. Go with God. Go with God and stay close to him. Amen. God bless you.